Hi everyone, welcome to another short lecture on sound design where we will be concentrating on channel splitting and channel merging in the Web Audio API. Now the Web Audio API has a lot of features and functionality for dealing with spatial audio where audio is encoded in multiple channels and for uh, upmixing from a simple formo format like mono to a complex format like 5.1 surround sound or down mixing in the other direction or specifying the type of speaker layouts and how channels might be treated. But we might save that for another lecture. Today we'll concentrate on one small aspect of how channels are manipulated but a very very useful one. And that involves taking multiple streams of audio and essentially converting it into a single stream with many channels or taking a single stream with many channels and converting that into many different streams of audio. So it can be laid down as different tracks of audio, each one having a single channel. So how do we do that? We have two nodes, the channel splitter and the channel merger. Let's talk about the channel splitter first. So it takes a single stream. Think of, um, think of a song and it has different elements or tracks in it. Uh, so it can have, uh, it can have bass, guitar, drums, and vocals. Well, in the same sense, you can have a, a single stream of audio but that stream has many different channels. It has a left channel, a right channel, maybe a side channels, a center channel, and however you, you want. The, the channels might not even have meaning with them, but it, it, the single stream has several channels, the same way a song might be comprised of many different tracks in that song. So, the channel splitter node takes a single stream, so a single input, and then has as output many different outputs, where the number of outputs, active outputs, technically it has a larger number, but the rest of them are all outputting zero. They're not, they're not doing anything. Um, so the number of active outputs is equal to the number of channels in that single input signal. And this is very useful when, say, you have a stereo signal and you need to make some adjustments to the right channel. So break it into two uh, separate streams, do whatever you want on a single channel stream from the right, and then merge the two back together. So uh, useful in channel mixing. You can imagine situations where you might have five or six channels in a spatial layout and a source is moving and you need to somehow change the gains on all of them. So it has one parameter, number of outputs. Now it does default to six, I believe, but generally you will need to define the number of outputs every time you use the channel splitter. So here is an example. You have stereo input and it produces two outputs, one for the left and one for the right. So the splitter um, can be defined either by creating a new channel splitter node or by calling the create channel splitter method of an audio context. In both cases, you need to specify this one parameter, number of outputs. If you do it with create channel splitter, you don't need to state that it's number of outputs. It knows there is only one parameter. Like the channel splitter, we have the channel merger. It does the same operation in reverse. So you have many different audio streams coming in and each stream in order becomes a channel of the single output stream. So the first channel comes in, goes to the first, uh, sorry, the first stream comes in, goes to the first channel. That might be in uh, surround sound, the left channel. Then the next stream comes in, goes to the second channel, the right channel, and so on. Uh, 
side left, side right, center, and the subwoofer or low frequency enhancer. So each input uh, can be downmixed. For instance, what if this for a stream is already a stereo track or 5.1 or any other format besides mono? It gets downmixed to mono so that there's just one signal and that becomes this new individual channel. Everyone gets down mixed. Again, if I give a more detailed lecture, uh, I will go over up mixing and down mixing in the web audio API and how it deals with all of that. It's not that complicated. Well, there's a lot to it. It's messy, I suppose. Not because of any problems with the Web Audio API. It's actually very good for dealing with that, but because there's a lot of uh, notation and a lot to cover, even though none of it is mathematically complicated. Okay, so let's give a little example here. If you have two stereo inputs, so you have a stereo track there, then another stereo track there, each one gets converted to mono and, and so the first stereo track becomes a single mono channel. The second stereo track becomes the second channel, also mono. Just like the splitter, the channel merger has virtually the same format, only now you need to specify the number of inputs. Default to six, unless, um, unless you say otherwise. Most of the time we might be dealing with mono and stereo or might have the number of inputs dependent on something else going on. So that default is not usually that useful in this case. Okay, so what is actually happening? As mentioned, we would usually have six inputs uh, to the channel merger, six outputs from the channel splitter. But let's take a source, a stereo source, we pass it through a splitter, and then we can pass that through a merger. Well, when the source goes into the splitter, <coughs> only the first two outputs are active, the rest are inactive. And then if we pass that into the merger, then only the first two inputs are active, and this works nicely. We get out a source. Technically it has six channels, but the last four channels are zeros. So it acts like a stereo uh, source. If we pass a source that is 5.1, so six channels, then we, um, we get out six different streams, each of which is mono and we can then put them back in and we get our 5.1 back exactly the way we started. So there is a slight difference. This one creates stereo and if we go through the splitter then the merger, we get out six channels, but only the first two active. If we pass a 5.1 through, then it stays 5.1. Okay. Let's look at an example. I think that will clear things up. The whole point of the way the channel splitter and the channel merger work, by the way, is that as much as possible, it keeps the number of channels consistent and sensible. So here I have something we're calling the flipper. Uh, or stereo flipper. What it basically does is it simply flips the left and the right channel. So whatever, so listening to stereo, whatever was in the left channel becomes the right channel. Whatever was in the right channel becomes the left channel when it's clicked. And you can flip it back the other way. So here is the code. It's quite compact. So written as a single uh, HTML file with the JavaScript embedded inside. We have a button called flip. When that button is clicked, we resume the audio context just in case it had defaulted to suspended. 
and we do quite a few operations. So let's look at outside that function. First, we have a Boolean variable called flipped, which is set to false. Then we define a new audio context and a single oscillator. We've set it to a frequency 200, but it doesn't really matter. At the moment, the oscillator is mono. I think technically it's actually, um, I can look that up, but it acts like mono. If it's in stereo, then it's still centered between left and right. So what we want is for that to only come out of one channel and then we can flip it back and forth. So we can run that through, run that mono source through a merger and make it one channel. And here we create a channel merger, which we're going to call it stereo source because once we connect the mono source to it, the output should be stereo. Now this is interesting. I don't think we've seen this before, but we are saying mono source is connected to a stereo source zero zero. So that um, there are other parameters that a connect can take and it's basically saying which um, which output of the stereo yeah which okay let's see which output of the mono source goes to which input of the stereo source. So which output of whatever you connect uh, the output from goes to which input of whatever um, the uh, of whatever you're connecting into. And here we specify zero zero. So be quite specific whether the original source is mono or stereo. We're only taking one channel of that and we're making that the first channel of the stereo source. So now we have a stereo source where just in the left channel, we have an oscillator. Okay, and then we define two nodes, the splitter and the flipper. And here goes, if it is, um, well, let's start here. If it's not flipped, already if we haven't switched the stereo channels then let's then let's do it so that's what we do with this else statement the stereo source goes into the splitter and the splitter connects to the flipper where the left channel of the splitter goes into the right channel of the flipper and the left, the right channel of the splitter goes into the left channel of the flipper. So now the flipper has the reversed version of the audio and that connects to the destination. And we say it's now flipped. If it is flipped and we want to flip it back the other direction, then we can simply connect the stereo source rather than the flipped source to the destination and flipped resets to false. Okay, let's give this a go. So it should be coming up in just a second, but let's see if it's, ah, now it should be coming up.